Good morning. Welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church this morning. We extend a special welcome to those of you who have joined us online this morning. We encourage you to take a moment to get settled and prepare yourself for worship as well. And at this time, I invite the congregation to stand as we begin our worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We begin our hymn singing Sunday with Before You, Lord, We Bow. This hymn is found in the National Songs section at the back of our hymnal on page 893. The very last hymn. All nations join to sing, Before you, Lord, we bow. Every land and people is welcomed when the crucified comes in power, a countless throng that sings salvation song. Francis Scott Key, most well known for the writing of the Star Spangled Banner, wrote this hymn text for the 4th of July in 1832. Key was born in Maryland and graduated from St. John's College, Annapolis, in 1796. He began to practice law in 1801, and from 1833 to 1841 was the district attorney for the District of Columbia. An active Episcopal layperson, he served on the vestry and as a lector at St. John's Church in Georgetown. This sturdy and majestic hymn tune was written by John Darwall, originally to pair with Psalm 148, hence the name Darwell's 148, as you can see in the lower right-hand corner of the page. Please rise and sing, which you are already arisen, before you, Lord, we bow. <laughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, good morning. Welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace. All are welcome. Our mission is to seek God and serve others. And what a joy it is to be worshiping together on this, the, the 4th of July weekend. Uh, offices will be closed on the 4th of July if you need anything. You probably have our cell phones, but we're taking the day off too. So if it's an emergency, please feel free to call us. Um, and uh, there's a few things going on in the life of the church. Tomorrow at 9 a.m. is our Monday coffee series online on Zoom. Join us to talk about worship and to also look ahead at what's coming up in the weeks to come um, in regards to worship. And then there are two events that are coming up for kids to be involved in and, and possible volunteers as well. We've got Cross Trails Day Camp that's going to happen on July 24th through 28th. It's $35 for a kiddo. You can sign up by scanning the QR code in here. It's a lot of fun. The Cross Trail staff come to us, and they put on camp for us, and the kids have a really great time. Um, and if you talk to any of the young people that went to Camp Christmas uh, a couple of weeks ago, you'll know they had a really fantastic time there, too. Um, and then Music Camp is coming up, uh, which is on the July 31st through August 4th. There's a little cost to that as well. You can sign up here online as well. But I want to draw your attention to the last day of Music Camp on August 4th from 6.30 to 7.15. You can come, all of you can come to see the musical that they're putting together called Called. I'm looking forward to seeing what this is all about. It's going to be a lot of fun. Put that on your calendar to be a part of that. Um, let's now turn our hearts and minds to the hearing of another reflection. Catherine Bates wrote America the Beautiful, ELW 888. In 1893, after the summer session at Colorado College, where she was lecturing, she was the head of the English department at Wellesley and traveled to Colorado with a group of fellow teachers. They ended their college session with a trip to Pikes Peak, which was the inspiration for the words to verse one. She says, I was very tired, but when I saw the view, I felt great joy. All the wonder of America seemed displayed there with the sea-like expanse. This text was first published on July 4th, 1895. Sorry. The tune Materna was originally written by Samuel Ward in 1882 for a hymn entitled, O Mother, Dear Jerusalem, which gives it the name Materna. He composed the tune while crossing New York Harbor after spending the day at Coney Island. The notes came to him so quickly, he jotted them on the cuff of his shirt. In 1912, it was paired with the words to Bates's hymn. During World War I, this pairing became quite popular. Many people feel this song would be a fitting national anthem, and it is often sung at civic, cultural, and sporting events. <laughs>
A reading from Jeremiah, chapter 28, beginning at verse 5. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from the ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our first lesson speaks of the violence and destruction that countries visit upon each other and that only God can bring peace. The hymn, O God of Every Nation, ELW 713, reflects this sentiment as well. This hymn is in the justice and peace section of our hymnal, and it too has sharp words about how we humans inflict death and destruction on each other. The last verse points to the day when Christ shall reign victorious. The text was written in 1958 by William W. Reed, Jr., a Methodist minister from Pennsylvania who submitted it to the Hymn Society in 1958 at a conference seeking new hymns. The tune is a traditional Welsh tune, powerful and in a minor key. Our congregation is familiar with this melody as we sing it during Lent to the text, Bless now, O God, the journey.
A reading from Romans, chapter 6, beginning at verse 12. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer, present your, do no, no longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having once been slaves, have been set free from sin, and now have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Listen, God is calling ELW 513 is an anonymous Swahili hymn from Kenya that Howard S. Olson translated into English. It was first published in America in With One Voice, the supplement to the Lutheran Book of Worship, the Green LBW. Olson says he heard it sung at a graduation in a theological extension program where Lutherans and Catholics worked together. He taped it, notated it, and brought it back to America. It was sung in Tanzania before the reading of the gospel. At the third stanza, the people stood when the words in Swahili literally say, let us all stand, let us all stand, let us hear the word of salvation. We will sing the refrain without repeats, and everyone will sing the leader part.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. So Jesus said to the 12, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. I invite you to be seated. Our gospel reading today tells us that those who welcome everyone into their midst are truly people of God. The hymn, All Are Welcome, ELW 641, echoes this sentiment. This hymn tune and text were both written by Marty Haugen in 1994. He is a popular contemporary hymn writer with many works published by GIA. Haugen says this hymn was an attempt to write a text that reflects the welcome to table fellowship that Jesus offered unconditionally to everyone. His intention was that the hymn would model the Lutheran fourfold rite of gathering, word, meal, and sending. All are welcome is dedicated to the Figliolo family. The tune is named Two Oaks, which was the name the Figliolos gave to their home in Michigan because the home faced two large and beautiful oak trees. Everyone will sing verse 1, 4, and 5, and men sing verse 2, and women sing verse 3.
We are all one in Christ, ELW 643, is entitled Somos Uno in Cristo in Spanish. This anonymous and popular Latin American text was translated by Gerhard Cartford in 1998 and was first pu published in the ELCA's Spanish hymnal. It is in the Community in Christ section in our current hymnal and speaks of our unity in Christ. The tune is also anonymous and fits perfectly with the text. It is in E minor and only has a narrow range of notes spanning a fifth. There is variety and rhythmic interest in this hymn and we invite any children forward who would like to play a rhythm instrument while we sing. Since it is short, we will sing it twice through. Children, come on up and help Pastor Steve make a joyful noise. Of kids, big kids too. <laughs> Eternal Father, strong to save. ELW 756 was written by William Whiting in 1860 for one of his students who was about to sail to America. 
This hymn has found wide usage in English-speaking countries as the Navy hymn and has been allied to the state almost as much as to the church. In the United States, it is inscribed over the chancel of the Naval Academy at Annapolis and has been used for many state funerals. John B. Dykes wrote the tune, Melita, especially for Whiting's hymn text. Melita is the ancient name for the island now known as Malta, where Paul was shipwrecked and found safety. The pairing of text and tune is a strong one and has a broad, majestic feel. It is based on Psalm 121 and has been called the Traveler's Hymn because it requests God's watch and care over the comings and goings of his people. invite the congregation to stand as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty,
Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. We pray for the church, for wisdom to heed the voices of prophets in our midst who cast a vision of God's promised future, for courage to welcome people whom society rejects, for resolve to serve all in need. God, in your mercy. We pray for creation, for local bodies of water, all rivers, lakes, oceans, and streams, for lands experiencing scorching heat, drought, or wildfires, for conservation organizations and environmental activists, for scientists working on clean energy solutions. God, in your mercy. We pray for this nation and all nations, for national and world elected leaders, presidents, governors, and legislators, for judges, juries, district attorneys, and public defenders, for military personnel, for those who are incarcerated, guide us in your ways of freedom that promote the, good, the common good. God, in your mercy. We pray for those in need, for exiles, immigrants, refugees, and those seeking asylum, for victims of harassment, torture, or abuse, for those who are ill, especially Dean, Michelle, Nolan, Brooke, Ruth, Eunice, and Linda, as we continue to pray for Valerie, Fred, Jimmy, and Mark during their treatments, along with all those we now speak aloud or keep silently in our hearts. God, in your mercy. We pray for children, for their safety at home and in child care settings, for their flourishing at summer programs and camps, for the many people who care for them, including parents and grandparents, child care workers and teachers, coaches, counselors and mentors, pediatricians and psychologists. God, in your mercy. We give thanks for Greg, Curtis's brother, and all the saints and prophets who have received the, the free gift of God, which is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. May their lives of humble service inspire us in faith. God, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share signs of peace with one another, and I invite those of you who are online to call someone or text someone a word of peace. In the gospel today, Jesus talks about a reward. It's not a medal or an accolade. You may remember that Jesus talks about rewards quite often when speaking about the Pharisees, how they would say long prayers with big long robes, and, and they would have their reward. In other words, they would have what they were asking for, the attention, the respect, the place of honor. But Jesus is talking about how this is a disconnect with God. Today, he's talking about feeling connected to God as this reward. It's made known in service to others, welcoming, he talks about, welcoming all as we would welcome Christ to receive this reward, this Christ-like moment, this connection to God is made known in that welcome. This is an amazing gift to have. Giving a cup of cold water to a little one in the name of the Lord is to receive that same reward, that Christ-like moment, that connection with God doing for somebody else. So as you give your gifts today, we give as Christ gives, with love, with joy, thinking of others, in service to others, because ultimately this is the greatest reward. It's a Christ-like moment. It's our connection to God.
Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the, the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your generousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymns. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, remembering therefore his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All is made ready and all are welcome at the Lord's table. At this time, I invite the congregation to please be seated. And you may take communion in one of two ways today. First, you may uh, receive the wafer. Um, we'll give you one and then you'll hold on to that and dip it in either the wine in the clay chalice or the grape juice in the glass chalice. Or you may choose to pick up an individual communion kit from the front aisle, the table at the front of the aisle. If you need gluten-free, please let us know. We do have gluten-free wafers available, and the welcome team will usher you forward.
Will the congregation please stand? The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment you have received at, we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite our uh, Stephen ministers to come forward to receive their home communion kit. And as it is the first Sunday of the month, um, we will be, Pastor Steve will stay up at the end of the service. If you would like prayers of anointing or blessing, we invite you to come forward for those individual prayers after the service is concluded. Gracious God, let your love be known through these Stephen ministers as they carry your word and sacrament to those who cannot be here. May those who receive this Holy Communion be strengthened, encouraged, and sustained by the community we are together as the body of Christ. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now to the end of the age. Amen. close, I just would like to remind you to always look at the bottom of your hymn in our hymn book to find the lyricist and the composer, and also on the far right you'll see the tune, the name of the tune, and many of you know that. You've been coming to church for a long time, but I just wanted to thank uh, our, our music team, these two behind us particularly, and also our love of hymns. It's so great to be in a, a church and in a denomination that loves to sing. So sing loud. <laughs> and finally, uh, I think we want to give Shelby special recognition. She's writing these uh, descants and obligatos that Steve is playing. She's composed those to go with the hymn. You don't just find those sitting around somewhere. Uh, occasionally you do. But to fit the service that is being constructed, she's written all that stuff. And, uh, and he's played it. So can we give them a round of applause for that? Thank you very much. Go to the World is included in the new ELCA hymnal supplement, All Creation Sings, which came out in 2020. New hymn tunes and texts are continually being written and old ones are being revised. This tune, Sine Nomine, by Ralph Vaughan Williams, is most often paired with the text for all the saints. It is a strong tune with broad sweep, flow, and contrast. Here it is paired with a text by Sylvia Dunstan. After a brief, arduous battle with liver cancer, Sylvia Dunstan died in 1993 at the age of 38. For 13 years, Dunstan had served the United Church of Canada as a parish minister and prison chaplain. She is remembered by those who knew her for her passion for those in need, her gift of writing, and her love of liturgy.
in peace, share the harvest.